So I'm going to start the demo and we'll get around to uh, some explanation of what's going on in the not too distant future. Uh, this particular model fit would take on the order of uh, three or four hours in the best code that I was able to write in R. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm loading some data uh, from an HDF5 file uh, that happens to fit into what John uh, Miles White was talking yesterday about use a, dic a dictionary of vectors to just represent what we think of as a data frame. Um, and from this, okay, so NCLB, uh, the No Child Left Behind uh, Act mandated that uh, students be tested every uh, year from age, uh, grades three to eight. And um, they have to you know, keep track of that. So some of the things in here are, you can see is race, white, Hispanic, et cetera. Um, X is sex, female, male. Um, G is grade. Uh, e is economically disadvantaged. Uh, and then M and uh, A are the math and the reading scores. All right. Uh, by the way, I didn't show you these data. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's real data and they won't be in the paper. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have information on students. I have information on uh, schools. I have information on uh, school districts. All right. And I'm going to create those as something that statisticians call a random effects term. All right. And the only thing that um, you should know about these is that they correspond to matrices that are very, very large. All right. There's two and a half million. You can't see the number there. Um, I don't really know how I can go about uh, moving it, so I won't. Uh, anyway, it's uh, two and a half million, uh, that first number, two, uh, uh, 2,549,000. Um, there's on the order of 880,000 students. And this is, in a way, a matrix, all right? It happens to be a very, very sparse matrix, but you're going to have a linear predictor expression that involves one coefficient for each student. Then you're gonna have one coefficient for each school, then you're gonna have one coefficient for each district. All right, um, for the time being, I'm just going to create uh, the fixed effects as according to the grade that they're in, because the grades are, uh, you know, grade three have different scores than in grade four and, and different scores than in grade five. And now I'm going to create uh, a model using that. Please work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, seems to be working. So in these, in, in this representation of the model, I need to keep track of all of those matrices. I need to keep track of their products. So, you know, when you have a model matrix X, you're looking at X transpose X and so forth. Uh, some of these are diagonal. Some of these are sparse. Some of these are dense. Some of them... Uh, will end up being triangular when I take a decomposition. All right. So that's the background. Now, um, if I look at, I can evaluate from a particular set of parameters. The parameters are of length three in this case. And so I'm just gonna start them at ones. And in this case, uh, when I look at the uh, evaluation of the, uh, shut um, oh, damn, okay, uh, I keep forgetting. Uh, okay, we may not be able to finish, but uh, we'll have a good try at it. Um, uh, 
Intel, bin, C, C. For some reason, I can't get the MKL environment set up under bash. Um, Okay. Um, so, if, if, if you know what was happening there, it wasn't able to find the Intel uh, math library. Uh, so, as I said, um, fitting this particular model could take several hours. And we hope it won't now, because we'll run out of time. Uh, okay. All right. And now I can do the uh, stats base fit of M1 true. Okay, it's doing the optimization. All right, uh, I forgot to time it. Uh, anyway, uh, it's going to take on the order of 90 seconds as opposed to several hours. And why? Well, uh, let's go to here and do this. And here, come on. OK, so why is Julia wonderful? Um, so I'm an early user developer of S and then a core developer of R. I work on these mixed effects models things. Uh, Ten years I worked on developing um, LME4 for R, and it uses uh, R, C++, Eigen, RCPP, RCPP Eigen. Went to a lot of effort to make sure that I wasn't making unnecessary copies. Doesn't work. That example would just clog the, even, even this, one of the servers that I use. So um, in December of 2011, I read about Julia. Um, you know, this was when Kino was in high school. I was retired. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I looked into it, and I haven't looked back since then. So uh, one of the things you may ask is, why am I speaking in this session? Uh, the real reason is that my abstract came in very late. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the numerical linear algebra, its use in technical computing. And one of the wonderful things about Julia is that the core developers are experienced in this. So um, that doesn't always happen. It's a rare combination to have experts in the technical computing and the language design and so forth. Um, so I'm going to talk about a person who has worked with this. How are we doing? We did it! <laughs> OK, so that would have taken a better part, you know, several hours on the other machine. I didn't put it in the at time, but it's around 90 seconds. Uh, David Sanders emphasized the one language. We all know this saying, OK, you can write this expression that would give you a least squares fit. All right? Uh, it's simple. It's elegant. It does not scale. And then Catherine Hyatt mentioned that you know, if you want to do large scale technical computing, it's really straightforward. You just learn about eight different languages. And you wrestle with the compilers and the cluster managers. And you know, the prospective student flees. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we got the. Um, Tony Fong mentioned that developing lint gets complicated because of all of these methods to do with linear algebra. 
And that's a good thing, Tony. <laughs> we want that, okay? You get specificity of arguments by doing that. And you can customize the, the methods to the particular arguments. Um, you know, everything that you learned about linear algebra in a linear algebra course is wrong. Um, you know, there isn't a well-defined rank. You don't use inverses. You always end up cutting these matrices apart into pieces. And we can do things like solve in place. You know, Jeff hates these names, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, the fact that you can say, okay, I got one of these things on the left and I got one of these things on the right and I'm gonna do this particular kind of operation and I'm gonna write it back into there. And then you can dispatch on all of these special types is very, very important. Uh, anything else in here? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can tell you something about the model, but I've run out of time, so I'll just give you this slide, which is, this is what I'm doing, okay? I have these matrices. Z is the great big sparse one. X is the narrow and denser one. Uh, lambda is, in this case, diagonal. And so I need to keep updating this set of equations and doing the decomposition, but it ends up looking like, I know, you, <laughs> okay. That's what the code looks like. All I have to do is define methods that are specific to down date, uh, that are specific to, um, in my case, I'm also inflating the diagonal and so forth. And I can handle all of those combinations and that's actually magnificent. So that's why Julie is awesome. Thank you. <laughs>